we're going to create our landscape in the style of Xavier Cassianos. And we need to put our name on the bottom, on the back of our paper to start with. And now we're going to start with our horizon line. A horizon line is a line that goes across the paper where the earth and the sky meet. You can decide where you want yours. Um, I think I'm going to put mine right about here. Make it kind of interesting so it doesn't just go straight across. Now we're going to divide our land into sections. Keep in mind, if you have a whole bunch of tiny sections, you will be painting them. So you might want to keep it on the similar or the simpler side. Now I've given you a paint palette with magenta, red, yellow, white, turquoise, and blue. And we are going to start with mixing the sky. So you have your brush. We're always going to use a clean, dry brush. You have your paint palette. Think about what color you want this sky. Do you want it blue? Do you want it sunsetty? It's up to you. Uh, you're going to start with your lightest color. So say I was picking sunsetty. I'm going to get a big scoop of white. Clean my brush. Dry it. Scoop up some yellow. This is a pretty large area so if I have just a little bit of paint that's going to make it difficult to get it completely painted. I'm going to do a little magenta with that. When I'm ready to mix, I think I'm going to mix everything into this white, or this yellow. Painting across, because if the sky was windy, my brush stroke should go across the page. You want to make sure you're not getting your paint all over your whole plate because you need more room for mixing your colors. Now that I have my yellowy white, I'm going to pick up just a little bit of pink. I could mix my pink on my palette like this, or I could mix it right in on my wet yellow paint. I'm just going to blend those colors up into that yellow sky. If it's getting dry, go ahead and add some more white to it or yellow and that will help it mix. Now I can clean, dry, and I'll go to this section. I only want you mixing two colors at a time. So say I had blue and I wanted to mix it with magenta. Got a pretty dark purpley blue here. If you mix it with more than two colors, you're gonna get some mud going on. And we don't want these to be muddy because he used very bright, bold colors. You can, however, use white. So let's say I pick up some pink, more magenta, clean. Let's see what happens when I grab a little bit of white with that. And I'll grab some yellow. Keep in mind your darker colors are going to be very vibrant. So only add a little bit at a time. Now I'll grab some red. Put up a little bit 
more white with that. Let's see what the turquoise will do. So I have my turquoise, my white. Let's grab a little bit of that red. So I don't want too many greens next to each other and I just made another one so I'm just going to make another line here. And then some of mine That color is too close. Maybe if I add some more white to this. All right. All right, now we're ready to add our details. <clears throat> We're going to be doing patterns in each of our little areas. You might need to pick a smaller brush, but think of a contrasting color. So if I was doing orange, maybe I'd pick up some blue. And try to 
try to use the tippy tip of your brush. Don't forget to clean and dry in between each one. If you were doing polka dots, you could use the back of your brush. If you still want to mix colors, you can. If you want to mix colors, you can mix three, but they all have to be analogous. That means they're together next to each other on the color wheel. Otherwise, you'll get the mud. You can also add little trees in the background or a little house. When you're all done, you can decide if you want to outline with a contrasting color. This part is up to you. And there you have your completed landscape. Right? old colors, lots of patterns, and we learned how to mix some new ones.